This is Chingasso, and you're listening to the Literati Records Podcast. Episode 121 of the Literati Records Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Graybeard, and I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to spend it with us, supporting independent music. My guests on the show today are Chingasso, an awesome stoner rock quartet from Denver. Man, I've been wanting to have them on for quite a while now, and today it's finally going to happen. And dudes, I am stoked. So let's take a quick glance at some live shows happening this week, starting with Fissure Mystic and Pythian Whispers playing on Wednesday, December 18th at the High Dive. This is number five in the On the Cover series, as Fissure Mystic will play Sonic Youth's Daydream Nation album. What a great way to celebrate Hump Day. On Thursday night, December 19th, our boys in And the Black Feathers will be firing it up over at Summit Music Hall's Moon Room. We think these guys are pretty awesome and couldn't be more pleased to have them as the first artist on our young label. 
We're so excited to have you check them out that if you hit us up on our Facebook page or their Facebook page, we'll make sure you have tickets to the show on us. Let us know before 7.30 on Thursday night how many you need, and we'll have you covered. Okay, that's it for the show notices. All music on today's show is from the Death Paw album, available on the Chingasso Bandcamp page. You can also find a complete track listing in the show notes on our website at www.literaterecords.com. Now, brace yourself for Chingasso. Well, I'm down here at Tennyson's Tap, where my guests tonight are Chingasso. Yes. Awesome, awesome stoner rock from Denver. Going to be firing up and playing the set in a little bit. Uh, let's start on my left here and get names and instruments. Uh, I'm Kyle. I'm a uh, guitar and vocals. Stephanie Bastard, bass. I'm John Go. I do guitar and vocals. Kevin Skins. Well, can you give us a brief history of how the band got started? Can you start playing music as Chick Gossip? Uh, well, that started. Steph and I used to be in a band called Alcoholida. Punk band, pretty straightforward. That kind of went the way of the dinosaur. And then uh, Steph's been one of my best friends for like years, even before I moved to Colorado. And uh, one night we were just sitting around watching TV at her place. And it was like six months, and like I was getting the itch to play again. And I told Steph, I was like, hey man, let's, let's start another band. But I don't want to do punk rock anymore. I want heavy. And Steph's natural reaction was like, yes. <laughs> so uh, got our original drummer, Joel. Joel was a, a friend of mine also, and his band had just broke up. So it was the three of us, and then we went through a couple of guitar players, tried a, tried a vocalist, wasn't meshing, and then we were over at... Um, Swanksgiving. Swanksgiving. The Swanks were at Thanksgiving every year. And Kyle was there, and his old band was kind of on the outs. And then it was like, hey, dude, we started a project you want in. And Show up on Thursday. Yeah. So then <laughs> I start. I kind of jumped in. I was the young gun when yeah. I joined. Still the young gun. So still the young gun. <laughs> but I've known Chris because my, my old thrash band and Alcohol Holiday played, and uh, I'd known Stephanie through... Uh, mutual friends and stuff, so I just kind of jumped in. And I'm considered a quote-unquote founding member. <laughs> you consider yourself that. You, you never, you never recognize. Can I take that. away the quotations now? No. <laughs> it's just funnier that way. Yeah. <laughs> then at some point, Kevin, Kevin joined the band, yeah. and then, yeah, and then uh, it was like a year, almost two years ago. Uh, Joel, Joel's from Michigan, so he moved back. Then um, I kind of put the word out that we were looking for a drummer, and Joel Rossi from Dead Ringer turned me on to Kevin. I love doing Chigasso stuff there. And just it's heavy, and it's what I was born to do. And just to stay on the record, as much shit as we give him, Kevin's a pretty fucking perfect fit for this band. Well, your Facebook page states that the band was born out of necessity to make rock dangerous again. Yeah, like that. Can you elaborate on, on what you mean by that statement? It's, you should go to a, a show, hear the music, and get fucking goosebumps. And be like, I'm not sure if I'm just really excited about this, or the fact that sooner or later I feel like something is going to fucking explode in this room right now. Well, I like the fact that, you know, we'll... We'll get on stage and like, yeah, we'll take a jacket off of you, but it's like, we'll get on stage and we'll raise up a drink and fucking cheers you, play our fucking songs, not compromise unless the sound guy makes us, and finish our set and then take everything down and then we're right there with you drinking along to the next fucking band. I feel like it's there's a community and like, yeah. you know, to make Rock Dangerous again, I think it's more or less to make it fucking personal again, you know, yeah. to make a, a scene matter, to make a community happen. You know, and not have there be some fucking separation because you want the bigger crowd so that you tell all your friends, oh, when we play, come up, when the other band comes up, leave. No, like, you you want to sit there, and I want to cheer someone and have a shot with someone on stage, and then I want to get off stage, I want to enjoy the show and have a cheers and have a shot with them after yeah. the show. Yeah, I don't want to get, like, 30 text messages, hey, what time do you guys go on? It doesn't fucking matter. The show starts at 9. Get there at fucking 9. 
<laughs> watch every fucking party. Yeah, doors are eight thirty. Shows at nine. Get there. Fucking watch everybody. Because I mean, it's not like you know, we're gonna fucking just get on a bill with any shit man just because we want a fucking show. I want to. We're booking shows where it's like we love the bands that we play with because we're all friends. We all, even when we're not fucking playing, we're hanging out, drinking, or fucking doing something stupid, or going to see one of our other friends' bands. And it's like, oh yeah, you know, the worst guys called. Uh, they're gonna go see Cult of the Lost Cause. Yeah, call the dudes from fucking Low Gravity. Let, let's all fucking get together and fucking have a good fucking time. You know? Yeah. Fucking a. Well, your Death Paw album is a great stoner rock album and certainly pays tribute to bands like Caius, Sermano, Sasquatch. Uh, do you guys have a primary songwriter or do you all contribute material? Um, well, I think we're all primary songwriters, like, but generally like, I'll write a song and then I'll kind of bring it to practice where Kevin and I will get together and kind of go, hey, I got this role and then we'll bring it in. Yeah. And then I may have what I think is solidified, but then I bring it in and Chris kind of goes, eh, I don't know about this, and like we'll tweak it. And Chris will bring a song and I'll go, how about this? So, I mean, there is someone who comes up with a central idea, but it really, every song is a collaborative effort. There's not any song that's just someone came in and was like, no compromise, this is the song. Right. You know, so it's, like I said, it's, it's all a collaborative effort. Every song is, is individualizes every other person. Well, we've been especially enjoyed adding your track Fury to our local Mix Monday rotation. Is there a story behind that song? That's, that's Kyle, so I'll have to ask him on that one. The song's actually about I lived in Aurora and I was jumped and stabbed ten times. Damn. And lived, and that's what that song is about. Wow. I, I could see where that would lend to the heaviness of the song, for yeah. sure. Are you guys currently uh, working on recording any release or follow up to Death Ball? Yes, we are. We're working on an EP right now. We're almost finished. We just have vocals, mixing, mastering, and coming up with money to release it. So, uh, give us money. Four songs. Five songs. Five, yeah. Five songs. Four songs with a hidden track. Yeah, Because and, yeah. we don't want to pay the royalties because it's a cover. <laughs> what happened? How did that happen? It must have been drunk. You don't list it. It doesn't exist. <laughs> and we're doing that at, uh, with Barn at Motorland Studios, and it's coming out really good. And then there's a... Uh, yeah, Barn's oh, yeah, awesome. That just knows yeah. shit. There's plans in the works to do a split 10-inch, I think, vinyl with uh, Valia Merida. Well, Denver has always seemed like a particularly metal and hard rock friendly town. How would you rate the current scene? I think, as far as I've seen it, I've experienced, I think, the, the stoner metal, or the, uh, the sludge metal scene in Denver, I think, is really strong and really connected. And getting stronger over the last couple of years, yeah, I feel like. I'd have to agree. Yeah. Well, that leads perfectly to the next question. Who are some other local artists that you guys think are legit? Our listeners should check out. That are delicious? Yeah. Some delicious? <laughs> delicious? <laughs> delicious? Delicious? Black House of Devil. Black no Gravity. No Gravity. Cult of Lost Cause. Bronze. Bronze. The Work. The Throttle Bomb. Throttle Bomb's awesome. Yes. Yeah, love those fucking guys. Deer Creek. Valley of Mirna. The Work. I said yeah. The Work. Oh, you did? Okay. The Company, did. Of, yeah. the company of Serpents. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I like that. It's fucking wow. Well, I like having those bands in town because, you know, we'll get up on stage and we'll play and we'll end the show and all of a sudden someone come up and just, you know, bust my balls and, fuck, man, how'd you pull that off? Fuck, you guys sounded so good. And it's the same thing, like, we'll all go out and I'll see Throttle Bomb or these other bands and you're just like, son of a bitch, they're so good. That makes, you know, kind of bites you in the ass. And so I think every band feeds off each other. We're all close, good friends, but, you know, you, you see them and you're like, damn. They're good, so you go and you want to make your band that step further. So I think it's a it's a productive scene. It's yeah. a friendly thing. You want to impress them. They want to yeah. impress them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and I'll be honest. There's a few things that like I've helped write where it's like, you know, I just saw Low Gravity. Man, I got to come up with a song. You know, yeah, that's better than Sexual Matador. It's like, fine, man. That song is so fucking good. All right, now, this is my answer to that goddamn song. Yeah. <laughs> Well, do you guys have any upcoming shows that you want to plug? 
Yeah, we December. December 28th. Yeah, December 28th with, yeah, with Luna Soul. Which Black is another Lamb. band you should check out. Yeah, Luna Soul is great. I saw them open for Fu Manchu. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was really good. Yeah, yeah Luna yeah. Soul, <clears throat> Black Lamb, and Abrams yeah. on December 28th at 3 Kings. That line was just incredible. Yeah, it's a great fucking line. We're very excited yeah, like, uh, to be playing that show. Well, what track should we close this interview with? Do you guys have a favorite of, of Death Paw? Uh, Death Paw? Oh, that's a tough question. I say INS. Well, Mud is slow and doomy. Yeah, it's very slow and doomy. I really like Death that song. Paw. Or Death Paw. Yeah. Death, 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 Death Paw. Death Paw. Death Paw. Well, guys, thanks a lot for uh, getting together with us, man. Yeah, thank uh, you. Look forward thank to you. hearing yeah, the new for release, us. the new EP coming up, man. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to play a couple of them tonight. Yeah. Sweet. Look forward to hearing it. Have a great show. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having us, man. Thanks. Thank you, Literati. Yeah.